Kyle reviewed. Hey guys, just came back from the theaters from watching Terminator Dark Fate. Um, this movie was an interesting movie. Kind of looking looking forward to it, you know, with the return of Linda Hamilton and Arnold Schwarzenegger to the roles and stuff. And this movie, you know, after all the Terminator stuff just going all over the place, and you can never really stick it down. And it's just kind of they're always just like meh episodes. Uh, and it's like, eh. and even the, the the trust for some of these, um, the excitement for some of these movies are kind of like I feel like a bit murky. I mean, it has. At my theater, uh, it was a Saturday, and they still had those premiere posters there, and I got two copies of different kinds posters and stuff. And uh, usually by Thursday night showing, or, or even the Marvel movies, the Friday night showing, things are sold out. Maybe the later Thursday night, they still, still might have some out, um, but they're kind of sold out, whereas they still had a lot of them left over. So it wasn't probably, probably not too many people going to see it on Thursday and Friday. So this movie here on IMDb has a 6.6 .6 out of 10. That's what I would probably give it, a 6.6 .6 out of 10. It's uh, it's okay, it's pretty good, it's a very good movie. Is it great? No. Is it the best Terminator movie? No way. And what's the problem with that? James Cameron didn't direct this movie. He's credited here on IMDb as, I, as a um, help for the story and stuff, or writing the story, but he probably gets credit for that, for creating the Terminators, creating the universe, creating Sarah Connors, and creating all those characters, just like Stan Lee and Jack Kirby get credit for all the Marvel movies because they created all the characters. Um, you know, we get uh, Batman, uh, we get Bill Finger and Bob Kane always get credited on Batman because they created the character, you know? Same thing for uh, Joe Shuster and Jerry Siegel for Superman. They always get credited as creating the character. So, you know, I don't know. It just seems like to me that they just, again, they just take him and they take James Cameron's name, put it on this movie that he created, on this, this franchise he created, so they can slap the original, original director as producer or James Cameron returns, you know? And then it's, as producer type thing and it's just like they all get producer producer means nothing it means he just attached his name to it I mean it means he was probably on set for one or two days or he read through the script once and said yeah sure fine you know but they'll pay him enough to to to, to make him say yeah sure it's fine you know and maybe he'll give it a little bit of tweaks here and there but that's nowhere near the amount of uh, input as if he had just directed this movie he should have wrote the entire thing alone and directed the entire thing alone um you know, he has out of the top two, out of the top three highest grossing movies of all time, James Cameron is, has the top has two of them. So that that alone should should give him his stuff. And I know he's he's actually actively working on all of these millions of uh, Avatar sequels, which is still it's been it's been a long time in, in the works. He couldn't take a break in between that. Um, I mean, he's been doing this for years now, um, and just waited we didn't need one we just had dark we had terminators at uh, genesis 2015 so we had that like what was it four years ago so you know like that you know that movie was kind of crazy and this is not that bad that movie was was kind of a forgettable this movie is kind of okay you know there are some of the new characters in here are kind of interesting here and there um and i really at first i didn't really get into the characters and i could, didn't really care about the characters until the ending the ending was really well done and the ending was, was stopped and then when the ending hit it was like oh you know when there's like that that moment where you don't know what things are going or how, how how the ending is going to be in that kind of moment of, of of limbo in the ending and stuff i was like oh wow that was really well done then i started to realize oh my god i have to care a little bit for these characters um are they memorable characters and i'm gonna remember outside of this after watching this movie no no you're gonna remember lynn hamilton you're gonna remember john schwarzenegger um and those are the characters you're gonna remember and that's it i mean i might myself might remember uh, uh gabriel luna as uh um, as is the, the 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 bad robot, whatever the hell he was called, but um, you know he was really good in this in this role. But at the same time, the 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 acting for that for an evil Terminator doesn't really quote require much acting. That's even why Schwarzenegger got the role in the first place. I think I'm not mistaken. He was originally supposed to play the part of Kyle Reese in the first Terminator, but he approached James Cameron and was like, "Yeah, I'm not an actor. I'm, you know, it's my first role. I'm not ready for that much." That kind of role, I think, I'm fit better in this term in this, this other role, uh, playing the Terminator, which would work. And I think there was even some scenes in the the second one where he had like a long dialogue and stuff, and he just would paste his lines 
just out of camera so that he can just read them off frame, you know? So I think that was kind of really interesting there. And obviously he's grown as an actor Schwarzenegger over the, over the year since that iconic role. Um, and he was really good in this. A lot of the problems that I have with this is that the trailer. The trailer gave away too much. The story the trailer doesn't give away the big plot point of the story or anything like that. So just because you watched all the trailers doesn't mean that you you ruined it. You know, you it ruined the movie for you or anything like that. No, but the reveals that they have of the of Sarah Connor returning, the reveal, the entrance of uh, Schwarzenegger character into this movie. Those were all given away in the trailer. So they had this big reveal where the, like, everything's kind of like, feels like it's in slow-mo about the reveal of Arnold Schwarzenegger. But we goddamn well know it's him. And then, and then this, the scene is built as if you're not supposed to know that he's, like it's a complete surprise that Schwarzenegger's in it. He's all over the marketing of this movie, you know. Of course, you know, we know that it's him. And they even show his entrance in the, uh, in, in the movie. Now, in the trailer like we see clips of it so you know exactly where his entrance is so it's just kind of annoying the way they did that the marketing guys should have watched the movie and and, and known what to do oh let's not put this scene, scene in because look how it's built as a big reveal let's not ruin that by putting that in the trailer so you know the, the movie is kind of nice it's kind of a fun movie i definitely would recommend watching it do i would i say go run to the theaters to watch it no does it need to be watched in theaters I don't think so unless you're a diehard Terminator fan. Um, definitely it'd be something to pick up and watch on your Netflix or any of the streaming services later on. Um, I mean, this is a, uh, a Fox thing and maybe it'll be on the Disney Plus streaming service at some point. Uh, we'll have to wait and see if any of those Fox things end up, end up over there. But uh, yeah, this movie was okay. But uh, nobody, and it's nothing to say about Tim Miller. He was really good. He's just not James Cameron, you know, he doesn't have the track record of James Cameron, and Deadpool was great by Tim Miller, first Deadpool, but that's, that was Tim Miller's story, whereas, this is James Cameron's story, nobody could do better than James Cameron, than James Cameron, you know, like, it's, it's, and, like, James Cameron should have done this whole movie, and he would have been amazing at it, uh, and there's, the characters, and, like, the, the, getting emotionally involved, was nowhere near the level of T2, and the Terminator 2, so, you know, we'll have to wait and see as to where things go with this. Do I want them to reboot from this? No. You got the original actors back. Keep it going. Keep keep things going from here. Have the next one um, be done completely by James Cameron. All writing, directing, everything all by himself. Let him do it. You know, uh, and let him go full out. I'm not sure what the rating is for this movie. But it was kind of okay. I liked how the plot of this movie was kind of very simple and easy to follow. It wasn't super duper complicated. Although there was some sort of time travel things that didn't make sense to me. Whereas one character is younger in the future but older in the past. Maybe I just read that wrong and maybe I saw that wrong or anything like that. But it just seemed a bit off for me. But um, yeah, I'll have to wait and see as where things go. So yeah, I think this movie is just kind of okay. Is it memorable or anything like that? No. Um... So it's just kind of, is it bad? No, it's just kind of, meh, you know, and it's just not um, on James Cameron level of quality. That's what, was what I'm saying about this movie. So let me know what you think, guys, in the movie, and I'll see you guys in another video. Hasta la vista. That'll be my turn. Kyle reviewed, like and subscribe.